Please note, this is not the art of the happy cleaner. My ambivalence is extreme, <laughs> twirling. The thing about an epiphany is that it is not narrow. It blazes, it radiates outward. The manifesto is a world vision and a call for revolution for all workers of maintenance, for these are the workers of survival. First, women as the ancient and uninvited maintenance class, though never invited, actually, would you like to be the caretaker for the home? Would you like to take care of the children? Women have forever until now, and still now in many parts of the world, are being told, are still being told, this is who you are. But nevertheless, so put there, we learned a thing or two in the last few tens of thousands of years, behind the scenes, at the side, downstairs. And together, this is my dream, with non-gendered service workers, look around. That's most of the people in the whole world. Together, if organized in coalition, we could reshape the world. So I send this four-page manifesto out, and I mean to do this three-part show, Care. I send it to the Whitney. Actually, I think I designed the three parts for three floors of the Whitney. <laughs> they write back, try your ideas on or in a gallery first before approaching a museum. They send this message to me on a half piece of paper. <laughs> I send it out again to two people, the art thinker and Duchamp expert, Jack Burnham. He excerpts it in his prophetic article on the exhaustion and end of the idea of the autonomous linear avant-garde that was published in Art Forum in January 1971. When he said to me, do you have any pictures of your maintenance art? And I said, yes. I hung up the phone. I said, Jack, get the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Lucy Lepard calls me on the phone and says, are you real? <laughs> or did Jack Burnham invent you for his article? It turns out we live three blocks away from each other in New York City. She invites me to be in C7500. That C is circa 7500. That's the population of Valencia, California, where this show, a traveling show, one of the first shows of feminist artists that traveled around the United States and even went to England from 1973 to 1974. She also invites me to join Webb a feminist um, artist group. Was that the name of it? West East Bay. West East Bay. <laughs> Lucy saves my life as an artist. And I would like to thank her today. <clears throat> this is one of the works I made for Lepard's C7500 show. It takes 45 minutes to get dressed to go out in the cold. They stay out 10 minutes and start saying, I want to come in <laughs> again. You can see this, I'm thrilled to say, right here in the Smith College Museum of Art, uh, which is, it's in the permanent collection now. It's a very, very beautiful home for this work. Now I notice the details. Who can button? how, and actually the baby screaming in the background that none of us performance artists were paying any attention to. <laughs> it has its own maintenance system, a cleaning rag attached to the work on its front plane. Jealous that my work was getting to travel, 
I proposed about 15 different performances at various venues where this show stopped. And the first set of four performances were for the Wadsworth Athenaeum when C7500 stopped there. These were not the full scale exhibition care, but bits and pieces. I go back out into the world with my new maintenance art eyes. I see the museum as the conservator and maintainer of the most valued objects selected by the culture and as definers of the culture itself, as problematic as that is. I want to create and to perform an analysis of the museum art institution from its maintenance underbelly. The artist alive within the museum becomes a wild card of freedom inside the constrained institution. This, I'm gonna show you uh, quickly the four uh, performance works I did here. This is called Mummy Transfer. They were all done in 1973. You see the, this is the maintenance worker whose job it was to clean the vitrine. Not, the rule is he's not allowed to touch the art object only the vitrine, which is the declaration by the culture that this is a thing of value within. I select this mummy in the vitrine because she still has breasts after 2,000 years. <laughs> he finishes his work. He's the expert of cleaning vitrines in the museum. Hands me his tools, the worker and the artist. I copy him, I do the same thing, I watched him and I tried to do whatever it was that he does. But when I'm finished, I stamp the vitrine as art, original maintenance artwork with my rubber stamp. And then he can no longer put his hands on the vitrine, even though he is the expert. So now the uh, transfer of the tools are, uh, to maintain the art object are, can only be done by the conservator. He does a condition report and decides it needs a dust cleaning and he does exactly the same tasks. But now you see that the notion of value has transferred out of the hands of the expert into the hands of the conservator. The next piece is called The Keeping of the Keys. Um, I dealt with the service, the worker, the maintenance worker. Now I move to the guards. And I do, I take their key. I put up an announcement uh, so people will be forewarned. Freedom is here. Freedom says, turn the key. Now, I proceed to lock the front door during museum hours. <laughs> Locked out, people get upset. Locked in, people get upset. Security deci decides access. The wild card artist let loose to operate in the museum even enters the domain of the curators. They are part of the museum too. They get very upset and all run out ahead of me to escape, <laughs> except one. Security articulates value, who gets in and who is locked out and who decides. In our day, security has blossomed into a big, big subject. I would like to do this work again. <laughs> These are the guards. And then um, on Sunday, I did uh, the washing tracks maintenance outside. and I continued inside. 
in the Avery Court. Oops. When the show moved to uh, Soho to the AIR Gallery on Wooster Street, I, I watched the sidewalk uh, for four hours. The cleanliness of this area from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. Two, three, four, three hours. Is, uh, will, is, the cleanliness is now being maintained as art. I yelled at the top of my lungs from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. It will be normalized at 5.01 p.m. I begin washing. Soho was still partly industrial and very much dirtier in 1974. Very dirty. I am in trouble. I'm in so, it's so dirty I'm running out of rags. The sidewalk is eating them up. The gift. Now you talk about crossing boundaries. This was, this was a, a shift in my life. The super from the building across the street had been watching me and hearing me yelling and watching me, and he saw that I was in trouble. I was running out of tools. He arrives. He doesn't ask, what is this? He doesn't ask, why is this art? Instead, he walks right into my art, bringing me an armful of new, very tough rags and all he said to me was, here. <laughs> he accepts me as real and enables me to keep working. And from that point, I think the deal of my art changed, opening myself to become interdependent with others with a complimentary braided offer, that's Pamela C. Lee's term for Gordon Mata Clark's use of negative and positive space, a braided offer for others to participate in shaping the work, not simply to receive it. That idea became real at this moment. I am so moved that I try to incorporate his gift into my body, wrapping the rags around and around to become my foot and leg, wanting to turn my body, not just my hands, into a cleaning force. I become mop foot, and he has entered my soul. I stand there facing two guys who even were afraid to come into the territory because I would wipe out their tracks. We stare at each other. This is 1974. These guys look groovier than the super. They look artier. But from here on, I belong with the super. I am in a new world of maintenance with actually most of the people in the world trying to keep going. This is touch sanitation, and I, I, I'm just going to show you a whole bunch of it. I'll, I'll set it up, and then I'm going to just run through the image. Uh, uh, <laughs> thank you. After a year and a half's research, talking to sanitation workers to see what's, what's up, to find out where my garbage went, which I did not know, I begin the performance ritual. I will make 10 circling sweeps around New York City. I refuse to experience through sampling the abstract way a social scientist comes to know something. Only if I immerse myself in sanitation's wholeness can this art become real. I float through the entire system's everyday reality to face all the workers, to travel to every sanitation facility in New York, garages, section offices, mechanical sweeper garages, snow operations, repair shops, borough commands, incinerators in those days, Landfills, several of them still in those days, and headquarters, the whole system. 